Hey guys, today I want to talk about Jeremiah 29 11. Now this is one of the most famous verses in the entire Bible and it says this, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Now you've probably heard that verse before, but do you really know what it means? Do you know the context in which it's written? And so that's what I want to do today. I want to dig into this verse a little bit so that we can understand the real meaning of Jeremiah 29 11. Before we dive into this verse, hit that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on videos that are coming out on this channel. Most people read Jeremiah 29 11 as a personal promise written specifically to them, that God has a plan to prosper them and not to harm them, that God has a plan to bring them a hope and a future. But the problem with this reading of Jeremiah 29 11 is it ignores who this verse was written to. It ignores the context in which this verse is found. You see, Jeremiah 29 11 is not addressed to you, it's not addressed to me, but it was addressed to somebody. So to understand what this verse really means, we need to look at that original context. We need to look at that original audience so that we can understand what this verse means. If you're trying to understand Jeremiah 29 11, what you need to first do is read Jeremiah 29. You need to read the verses that come before it. You need to read the verses that come after it because when we read it in context, we can get a fuller picture of what this passage means and how we can apply it to our life. When you read the surrounding passages of Jeremiah 29, what you'll see is that God is talking to Israel through his prophet Jeremiah. And while God is talking to Israel, Israel is living in captivity in Babylon. In other words, they're slaves. So this verse, this passage is written to a people that are held captive in enemy territory. And during this time of captivity, there were these false prophets going around claiming that God was gonna release his people soon. And what God does in Jeremiah 29 is he denounces those prophets and says, no, you're going to have to wait 70 more years. And that's tough news for the people of Israel to hear. And that's the context in which Jeremiah 29 11 is written. So let me read this verse one more time for you. And I want you to think about the context as you hear these words. Think about the people that were receiving these words. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. This passage is not written to a person, it's written to a nation. It's written to a real people that lived at a real time. And to understand what it means for us, we need to understand what it meant for them. Jeremiah 29 11 isn't written as a promise to you. It was written as a promise to the nation of Israel that was living in captivity. But that doesn't mean there's nothing for you in this verse. Actually, when we read this verse in context, I think it makes the application even more powerful for us today. Many people take this verse as a personal promise that God will give them what they want, that God will give them the life they want, the things they want, that God will make their life good and easy. What this verse is telling us is that life can be really difficult, but even in those difficult moments, God is still in control. You see, this is a promise. This is a reminder that when our life is difficult and maybe even seems like it's falling apart, that God is still in control. And while this difficult season might not end tomorrow, it might not even end and in our lifetime, God is still there and he will bring his people through it. That's why Jesus in Matthew 6, 25 says, don't be anxious about anything because our father already knows what we need. You see, this passage is a direct tie to Jeremiah 29, 11. It's a reminder that God's in control. And even though our life might have some worrisome things happening, we can have peace because God is still in control and he knows what we need. Some things in this life might never make sense. It must have seemed that way for the nation of Israel as they were living in captivity. And Jeremiah 29 11 is a promise for them and for us that even though things are difficult in that moment, that God is still in control. You see, this verse is not a personal promise to you that you're going to have a good life, that you're going to have an easy life, that God's going to give you what you want. No, actually, this verse is kind of the opposite. That you will have troubles. This verse is saying you will have difficulties. You will go through trials. You will have times where you're living in captivity, whatever that looks like for you. But that even in those difficult moments, what we need to know, what this verse is telling us is that God is still in control. 
that he still is in control. He can see the larger picture. He's orchestrating a bigger story behind the scenes that we cannot see. And while it might not make sense to us, we can have faith that God is in control. You see, the gospel message isn't a promise of an easy life. In fact, it promises the opposite. It promises that you and I will have difficulties and trials and struggles, but that we can have hope because we serve a God that has overcome those difficulties in these trials. So stop reading Jeremiah 29 11 as a personal promise to you and instead read it as a promise that all who follow God can have hope even when things seem hopeless. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you did, would you subscribe to this channel and then also like and comment on this video? I'd love to hear from you. It's important if it's important it's important it's important when it's important it's important if it's important